Haribu AMG Realtors. We have specialized in selling of land across the country in areas like Nanyuki, Naivasha, Nakuru, Juja, Kagunda Road, Malindi and the Abadeas. Contact us today for land investment solutions and have your title deed delivered within 60 days upon completion of payment. SMS AMG to 402 or call us on plus 254-748-229-941. AMG Realtors, we don't just deal in land, we deal in value. First of all, thank you so much. Jason, for being here today and just joining me on the We Don't Play podcast show. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Absolutely brilliant. And thank you for having me, Faber. Yeah, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. You know, it's so interesting how we're also wearing, you know, a free right color. <laughs> that's the thing yeah. that, that still gets me. I'm like, wow, this is really, really beautiful like it wasn't planned you know but you know that's the whole essence of how we're able to connect you know at first impression you know when you think about everything in totality it is yeah it's strange uh, i saw the red and i felt much more at ease immediately so there is something about kind of looking like each other in some aspects that really makes you feel comfortable so the red shirt brilliant play on your part yeah lucky play maybe <laughs> Appreciate that. You know, I would love people to know more about you. You know, who is Jason? You know, what do you do? Because I know today is going to be really, really insightful for people to learn today. Right, yeah. I'm Jason Barnard, and I call myself the brand SERP guy, and I'll explain that really quickly. SERP is Search Engine Results page, so that's results in Google. And a brand SERP is the Search Engine Results page for a search on your exact brand name or your personal name or your podcast name or your uh, film name so it's the result that google shows that tells you all about the thing you're searching for be it a company a person a podcast a film or whatever it might be and from my perspective in the seo world search engine optimization world nobody else is really looking at this so it's kind of a unique aspect a unique angle on the whole search engine optimization thing and the other thing is that i think a lot of people miss how important it is because people who are searching your name or your brand name know who you are and now they're just thinking about will i interact and will i do business in the case of a company or will i listen to the podcast so they're incredibly important people and we should not forget them it's amazing that you've said that because some people think that they have a name, they have a brand, but no one is going to really search for them because it's not connected. It's, it's this kind of thing that has been happening and I'm like, they shouldn't be thinking that way. No, 100%. I think we forget that um, a lot of us, I mean, myself included, search a brand name just to get to the website. Um, so an existing client will, or an existing Facebook user will search Facebook. There's a vast number of searches on Facebook for the word Facebook, sorry, on Google. And that's really, really important. But even if I've got a small company and, you know, maybe 20 people a day search my brand name and I think, well, that's not important. It is because the 20 searches a day are your clients or your future clients rather than people who just don't know who you are. And the other thing is that we spend a lot of time thinking about my brand message, how am I going to present myself on my own website, my social media, when I'm in the press. And we don't think, how does Google present it? Does it present my message as I want it or does it present something completely different? And if it's com presenting something completely different, you need to kind of think, well, why is that? Because Google has no reason to present anything different to what you want if what you want it to present is, is honest. So it's up to you to make sure that Google understands what your brand message is, understands what's important to your audience when they are looking at your brand on Google, and ensure that Google understands that so that it shows your brand message to your audience. That's beautiful because when you're talking about your audience, the people you're connecting with, we can go even into domain authority a little bit when it comes to creating those relationships, you know, with the links and you know, people don't think about websites that way because for me, I've I've thought of it this way. I treat websites like land. That's a domain property. <laughs> so if it's a digital asset, then you should treat it as one, as an asset, you know, but people don't, people just buy domains and think, okay, 
have a website but they stop there or they build a whole website and forget about SEO it's more of an afterthought which is really daunting yeah I mean they don't think about SEO that's number one but even if they, even the people who do think about SEO don't think about the brand message that's being projected to Google and then on to the clients and the prospects and the users and their, their um, uh, also job applicants mm. journalists who want to write about you what do they do they Google your brand name to figure out what it is they want to say a potential hire will Google your brand name to see if they want to work for you um, and if, if you're in a, a beginning state a startup state the investors are going to search you know you, in that case let's say you get two searches a month but those two searches might be the investor who's going to put two million dollars into your company mm. so what they see when they google your name is incredibly important there so kind of the afterthought goes beyond seo and onto brand message through google and then what i like about brand search is that it reflects what google thinks is valuable and helpful and important to your audience and so you can just look at that and say well is that right? Is that what is valuable and helpful to my audience? If not, why not? Is it because I'm not investing enough time and effort to interact with my audience on those things that are important to them? Or is it that I'm doing that but Google doesn't see it? And in both cases, you need to rework, either change your strategy about what you're doing or adapt what you're, how you're presenting what you're doing to Google through SEO. Yeah, that's a great point you mentioned because as you were speaking, I was thinking about the website. I'm thinking about Google Search Console, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, and then Google. So people forget to connect those three, which helps them to bridge the gap, but they often don't think too far because that SEO element is not really, it's not mastered. Right, yeah, which is a great point. And then you, you take it yet another step. I keep going another step forward, but I love doing this. Is that on your brand serve, it will have your sites at the top, but then it will have your social media channels, your social media profiles. So you need to take it beyond just the Google properties, Google Analytics, Google Search Console, your website, and onto the social platforms as well, and say, what, which ones is Google showing? Mm. How can I optimize those? Is it showing Twitter? Because Twitter's important to my audience, if it is, then I need to spend time on Twitter interacting with my audience. If it's not showing Facebook, maybe I can just put Facebook to one side. So it's a great way to prioritize. I can focus on Twitter because Facebook isn't dominating. And if Facebook does come up, then I can start using, interacting more on that. Or if I feel Google's got it wrong and it's ranking Twitter to my audience searching my brand name and I think it should be ranking Facebook, I need to demonstrate to Google that Facebook is more relevant so I need to really work on that and indicate on my own website, Facebook is important, Twitter is less important. Mm. And then by working on Facebook, getting that interaction, getting the reviews, getting the comments on posts, Google will realize after a time that Facebook is important and push it up and put it onto your brand search so that your audience searching your brand name on Google will see your website, Facebook. The things, the places where they want to interact with you on your website and on Facebook, which is brilliant. That is huge because I, I believe people are going to think about it differently now because everybody has content. Like that's one thing you can't miss now, but not everybody does content marketing. Right. Yeah. And, and that is a great point is from that perspective, as soon as you look at that and you say, how is Google perceiving it and how is it presenting my content to my audience? And it's really important to think not just on my own website, but on all the websites that represent me in any way, manner or form. Then I can start to think about content marketing in a holistic sense. And what's ironic is that by focusing on your brand SERP on Google, you are able then to build a non-Google centric digital strategy. So it actually gets you off the reliance that you might have on Google today because it will force you to work on your social channels. It will force you to work on those review platforms, the coupon platforms, um, all of these things. And, and your PR, the articles about you, they will tend to rank. So get some great PR, get a great article ranking on your brand set because that is great marketing, digital marketing in the wider sense, reflected in your brand serve. And the bonus, the cherry on the cake, is that it will help your overall SEO because Google will understand who you are, what you do, who your audience is, and that you are a credible solution because you have such great content and it has understood 
that you have that great content. And I like what you said about understanding because I love the process of understanding something which takes time. You know, you can't, you know, people listen to rooms, podcasts, shows, they're like, oh yeah, okay, I got that. But they come back tomorrow and they can apply that or implement that or test it or evaluate the process. So that acronym EAT, Expertise, Authority, Trust, people think about those things and they know, okay, if this is what Google stands by and this is what they're doing, then how honest can you be without plagiarizing or duplicating your content, which is bad, you know, practice for your SEO. So it really goes deeper, like you said, into branding, into structure into layout Mm -hmm. yeah and that's a really really good point and then eat expertise authoritativeness and trustworthiness is google's acronym and google's set of judgment of are you credible which for me i prefer the word credibility are you a credible solution so you said eat i say credible google say eat so google agree with you and i'm out on my own talking about credibility (laughs) but it's the same thing it's just a different way of saying it and Google is looking to provide to its users in a general sense when they are searching on Google that they're looking for the answer to a question or the solution to a problem. And Google is looking to give them the best possible solution or the best possible answer from the most credible source as efficiently as it possibly can. So if you can prove that you are the most credible source you have the most expertise, the most authoritativeness, and the most, tr- and you are the most trustworthy, then your content is much more likely to rank at the top for all of the keywords that you're aiming for. Um, so, I mean, Google's aim is simple, provide the best solution to its users as efficiently as possible. And we come back to understanding, Google needs to understand who you are, what you do, and who your audience is, in order to be able to make that match between the user problem or question and your great, wonderful content that answers the question will solve the problem. Yeah, and it's I think it's highly based on the algorithm too, yeah. because those core updates that happen, those development cycles, you can't control those. But what you can control is your quality control. And yeah. it goes a long way into your brand, as you said, 20 years from now, do you still are you still reputable? Are you still credible? Are you still sustainable as a business? Because not every business is sustainable when you think about all the facets. No, 100%. And, and that kind of idea of um, don't be impatient as well. It's really important to remember the algorithms evolve. Uh, there are some big updates sometimes and they can change massively. But what will happen is that as the machine, the algorithm understands you and it gets better at understanding as well. They're improving, you're improving, and the two are moving together. So the, as time goes by, it will understand you better. And when it understands you better, it will be able to present you as the answer or the solution to its users. But then there's the question of confidence. And I don't think we realize that a machine needs confidence because not only does it want to provide the best solution, it wants to be confident it's done that. Mm. So on, on, the, on the thing about understanding is the machine needs to understand. If, if you look at the machine, Google like a child, this child just wants to understand what you offer to whom you can offer it and are you a credible solution and your job is to educate it which offers you have for whom and why convince it why you're the most credible solution so if you look at it that way instead of looking at google and this big scary machine look at it like a child you're the parent you're educating it educate it starting with your own website but then what does a child do? It goes and asks grandma, it asks the head teacher, it asks the policewoman down the road. So you need to make sure that all of those corroborative sources around the web, the newspaper, the media sites, your local association, if you're a, a dog a poodle parlor, for example, you would want your poodle parlor association to corroborate this information. That's the equivalent of going asking grandma. Right. So if I say it, parent, then grandma says it in a similar manner. The Poodle Parlor Association of Paris is what I like to use as a because I'm in right. France. Um, then the child is going to build confidence that you are indeed offering the correct solution for the user and that you are a credible solution because the Poodle Parlor of Paris Association will say, yes, 
this is a credible, authoritative, expert provider of poodle, poodle shampooing services. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe so too because that's really where that excitement comes in. When you think about it like a child, you want to play with the child, you want them to be happy, you want them to be in the good moods, you know, to the point where you can actually see that reflection of what you've invested, you know, and people Brilliant. think about the time as well through the investment. Yeah, and then when the child goes, I understand who you are, I understand how wonderful you are, that's your brand search, that's the search engine results page for a search on Google on your brand name. When it shows you your brand message reflected back at you with these video boxes, maybe a knowledge panel on the right hand side, uh, maybe the Twitter boxes, that's the, the, you said it beautifully, I can't remember quite the words, but the, the bright eyed understanding reflection of an understanding of what it is you've been explaining to this child and the child likes you and the child trusts you that's an amazing experience yeah i believe so too and as you start thinking about it something just came to me and i was thinking wait a minute isn't this a fact or maybe it's fiction i don't know but we can talk about it is your domain name establishment very important when you think about two years because when you think about a child in two years that's a domain two years so a two-year-old child or a two-year-old site you know what have you been feeding it you know what images videos carousels links you know referrals backlinks you know what are those things that have been done over time and is it is it true that those two years are important or is it just oh in six months i can bootstrap my business and land on the serp <laughs> right um a strong domain is very important the history is very important so if you have a historical domain name for example you started in uh, the year 2000 that's 22 years it's clear that the child has seen that domain for a long period it's likely to trust that domain more unless the domain's done some black hat techniques or cheated right. or whatever it might be so that obviously the caveat there a new domain is quite difficult in the sense that the child is saying well this is new i don't know who this might be but if you can get well, I mean, we traditionally we look at inbound links. So inbound links are very helpful in this sense. Is if you get inbound links, and this is incredibly important, from highly relevant websites, it isn't the big hitters, it isn't Wikipedia, it isn't the New York Times. Once again, it's the Poodle Parlor of Paris Association linking to my Poodle Parlor that's going to make the most sense to this child. It doesn't make sense for the New York Times to link to my website. The child's going to go, what does that mean? It doesn't help with understanding and it doesn't actually help much with credibility uh, in terms of kind of the, the, the child understanding that this is credible because it's not relevant. So if you've got a new website, first thing you want to do is get those relevant inbound links from the sources that Google already knows and trusts. The child trusts them, they point to you with a link, the child says they trust them, I can trust them too. So. An old domain name isn't necessarily the single most important thing. The single most important thing is that you can build your brand message on your own website and make sure the child understands that that website represents your business and then explain to the child what it is you do and who you do it for. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for clarifying that because <laughs> it helps. <laughs> you know, so people are like, I've been having this domain for 10 years. Why is it not working for me? So. It's so good how you were able to bring that together. Right. And there is a really important point there as well. Is buying a domain name because it's got history is something that some people do. Um, thinking, right, if I buy a 10-year-old domain, it's got this history, so I'll buy it. And it, it's got a domain authority. People use that. I don't really like the term, but let's, let's fly with it anyway. The problem there is you don't know what's been done on the website in the 10 years. Mm. You don't know what the child thinks about that website or that domain name, rather. So it, it is a strategy you can use and you can pay top dollar for, for a domain name because it's got lots of inbound name, because it's got a historic a history behind it. But is that worth it? Not always, because you might have all of the people in your industry ready to, uh, to kind of group around and help you out by giving you the links that are truly relevant. And then you're building something that you understand, that you trust, and that you know when you present it to the child it's going to make sense. So I've actually registered um, 
five domains in the last year uh, as an experiment. I do lots of silly experiments, mad experiments, to try to see how well I can educate this child. And because of my place in my industry, I could get links in from very relevant sources to these totally new domain names, and they're all doing incredibly well. And it isn't because I'm a brilliant SEO, it's because I managed to get people within my industry to provide me those back links to show Google that this is relevant, that it is trusted within the industry, that it's authoritative within the industry. I associate myself to it, and then I'm on my way. Wow. This is going to help you. You have to put in the legwork. Sorry, really important. Yes. You can't just say, oh, it'll work. You have to put in the legwork. It's writing to people. It's human relationships. I've pulled in so many favors from people that I've been interacting with for years. So it's it's human relationships. And I think we often forget how important human relationships are because the web is a representation of the world and human relationships. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because that human relationship is coming from a returning customer, a returning visitor, you know, and when you think about the analogies on how they connect, it's like, this is the same person coming to my store that checked me out online at home, that's reading my email, that's thinking about me when I'm about to do something, you know, when I need a problem solved, how do I get there? And it helps people to really keep you top of mind, like you said, when it comes all the way back to brand service. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, I, I think kind of one of the things that I've learned over the last few years is I come from a world of SEO. I'll tell you really quickly how I got into SEO is that I made a cartoon with my wife um, called Boo Wan Koala. It was a blue dog. I was a blue dog in a cartoon. She was a yellow koala. And it was phenomenally successful. We had 5 million kids coming to the site every month in 2008. Um, it was massive. And we did a TV series and it was wonderful. And unfortunately, the business had some problems, um, very long, boring story, and I had to find work. And what I did was pitch for work, say, I had a million kids a month coming from Google alone. If I can do that for a blue dog and a yellow koala, just think what I can do for your SEO and your business website. And that's how I got the work, that's how I got into SEO, because I've been working on SEO to promote the kids' website. And what was surprising is i went through a period working for businesses of just thinking i need to do pure seo please google and work on google the whole time it was google obsession which is quite sad and then one day i realized actually with the kids website one of the biggest drivers was the fact that parents grandparents teachers local associations play schools promoted it within the people they knew around them and linked back to us as a great resource. Mm. And it was actually that that drove the SEO as opposed to the SEO driving that. And what I've now got back to is that idea again, and it's what I'm doing again with my company, CaliQ, is driving the company forwards by human relationships, by great content, by providing a wonderful user experience to the people who are truly relevant to my business. And Google, nicely now we're going to change google from being a child to being a dog is following along obediently which is delightful right that is so true because it's now showing the importance of where do you show up on google you know some people start on page 100 and then they jump to 50 and then they jump to 30 and now they're 10 so and that happens over like let's say six months nine months 12 months but people kind of they don't think about it oh 100 okay that's that's fine 50 okay that didn't change anything they're not seeing those results because they're not seeing the vision exactly and and you make a really good point about 100 is useless 50 is useless 30 is useless 20 is pretty useless as well it's only when you get onto page two that you're actually going to get people coming to your website from google in any reasonable number but i said they were useless they're not because you're evolving, because you're moving forward, because Google's starting to get to grips with the fact that you are a valuable resource. And that patience of saying, I need to build up over time, and Google will follow as long as I present this information to Google in an acceptable manner, which is what SEO is about. It's packaging your content so that Google understands it properly. Yeah. And the, um, I was gonna say something that's totally slipped my mind. Oh, that was it. And you said six months maybe a year that's a much better timeline than oh it'll happen next week it doesn't happen next week 
six months to a year, I had a client who built a, a big section of their website and it took two years. And after two years, they now outrank Apple for queries around, search queries around ESIM. And that's the kind of thing you can get. The, the takeoff was incredibly slow, it was incredibly gradual, and it took two years. And now they're in a situation where everything they publish gets a good place on Google fairly quickly because Google trusts them and it sees them as expert, authoritative, and trustworthy. In, in short, a credible solution to the problems that its users are presenting to Google right. when they make a search. Wow. I hundred percent agree with that because <laughs> I'm it, glad you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it it just shows maturity. It shows evolution. It shows that that what's how is it evolving from this SERP that was in 2018 and now it's 2022, and people are now thinking about voice search or you know Siri. They think they don't think about those results like what are those results you're giving and you said you're also feeding them with knowledge because you look at some of the SERPs and you notice that some of them are 2019, 2016 and the competitors or the people that try to get there don't think about how to use like you said social media you know how do you talk about the freshest perspective because Google's looking for a fresh perspective and that perspective may take time to process right no, I understand. And social media, I think, is something kind of important. I don't know if anybody in the audience uh, listens to SEO advice or asks SEOs. And there's a big debate for years. Does social media, is social media a signal within Google's algorithm? And the answer is it doesn't matter. Because social media is there for you to interact with your audience. And you should be doing it because it's profitable in and of itself. Then what you do is present to Google, this is my social media account, here's how I'm interacting with my audience. And that reassures Google that you are, in fact, interacting with your audience. And that if it does send you, sorry, if it does send its users to you for a solution to that problem, that you will, in fact, interact with them, that you're available. So social media does have a great deal of effect on your entire digital strategy. And Google does pay attention to it, not necessarily directly in the algorithm, but certainly in how it understands who you are and, how, and, and the fact that it understands that you are in fact trustworthy in the fact that you interact with your audience and many, many other ways as well. But just kind of the point for me is to look beyond Google and say, what do I need to do to help my audience? I need to provide valuable content for my audience. I need to get them to consume it. And if I can do that, present it to them on platforms where they're comfortable, Twitter, Facebook, um, on, a, on a local media site, Google Parlor Association of Paris, if we want to as well. And if I get them comfortable with that and I'm pulling them down the funnel, they will end up searching my brand name. When they search my brand name, that content that is valuable, the Twitter account, the video boxes, or that great article I got, will appear on my brand set. So it, 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 it does end up being useful even from that aspect. Yeah. Is that I pull them down the funnel. They haven't searched on Google for any of my products. They just ended up searching for me because they know who I am. And that great content I created, they see it again when they search my brand name, they're reassured, and they buy from it. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. Because now it's connecting the dots and also thinking about the experience, the user experience, which is also very important for them to think through. And ideally, you know, that also helps them to really understand where they're going to, who they're going to, why they're going to them, you know, and over time that also increases that credibility, like you mentioned. And at some point that person has been looking at you for two years, may eventually want to buy from you. So you've, you've educated them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Sorry, I interrupted. But um, it, and it's that patience thing again. It's saying don't plan your business to succeed in three months. Plan for it to start succeeding in two years. Um, so if you've got that mindset, then you're both working on a realistic timeline for Google in terms of performing on Google, but also a realistic timeline for creating your digital footprint. But if, if offline, you would you would have that timeline in your head anyway. Online isn't a magic bullet, a magic solution where everything works tomorrow. It's a representation of the offline world, but just through a browser. Yeah. So I think 
if we bring our expectations of the online world to map more to our expectations of the offline world, we'd all be probably happier. That's true. And even looking at Facebook, for example, <clears throat> like Facebook, for example, excuse me, it's like mm. Facebook is a website. It's a domain name, so it's the same competition. Yeah, I mean, f Facebook is is massive, but I mean, Facebook didn't get massive by ranking on Google. Right. Facebook got massive because people were talking to each other about it, and you know, uh, that that's marketing. So, kind of, from my perspective as an SEO, we come back to this blue dog and yellow koala thing. Is I went from marketing. To SEO because I forgot about the marketing part, and then one day somebody's like, "Actually, no, yeah, I'm actually a marketer, and SEO is one part of that." Mm -hmm. And what is really lovely, I was talking to a guy called Tom Critchlow the other day, and he was pointing out that as an SEO, because we look at PR, the, the articles on other websites, we look at social media, we look at email marketing, we look at the website, we look at uh, the branding. We're actually the, the one aspect of any company within an online company anyway who brings together all the different departments so seo can be a hub but it isn't the be all and end all of your business the rest of it is the be all and end all seo knowledge can help you to bring that together and help your your the members of your team to work better together and then with that seo becomes a, a process of packaging what everybody else is doing for google and it's a bonus and if you look at it that way you're going to be happier too i believe so too <clears throat> because that <laughs> is no it's true <clears throat> it's so true because i'm thinking google has 92 percent market share yeah of search so if you apply the pareto principle and you figure out your 80 20 and know okay 20 percent of my time i'm spending 80 percent of value that means 80% of my returns will be invested because I was able to put that 20% of investment. That's two hours. That's five hours a week of just one hour each day optimizing your content because people post like content two years ago. They're like, I've never thought about optimizing my old articles. Like they don't think like that. They're thinking new articles, new pic pictures, right. new videos. <laughs> it's so different. <laughs> Yeah, no, and going back and looking at what you've already done and saying, does it still apply today? I mean, that, that's a, a really great point about the world changes over time. So something I wrote three years ago, A, might not apply in the same way it used to, but B, I probably got better at my job. So yeah. I can probably explain whatever it is I was explaining better. So I've got every interest to go back, rework it to make it better for my audience uh, and Obviously, in that case, Google will see that it's better for the audience and it will, it will push you up the rankings so it becomes a double win there. Yeah, 100%. You know, one question I'd love to ask you is this before, you know, we get to the wrap of this podcast is, you know, we were talking about this earlier. People also ask or featured snippet because I, you know, recently read an article and you know they talked about the three years worth of data so if we're talking about you know two years right now three years is pretty solid so when you think about your business and your structure and your break even and you know what are you doing with your domain property because you're paying for that domain so what that what's that investment going into when you think about the holistic features and mm -hmm. they, they mentioned that it's much better to be on the people also ask which drives more you know clicks click the rate but that click through, that click through rate does not determine your positioning on the search or on the featured snippet. So I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Right. Yeah, I mean people also ask is, is, is incredible because two or three years ago, let's say it was ten percent, I don't know the exact figure, ten percent of Google results complained that people also ask. That's now closer to forty percent. And on brand search, the result when your audience searches your brand name on Google, it's more like fifty-five percent. So people also ask are uh, what Google's calling learnable moments or teachable moments. It's a moment when you search for something and Google says, well, maybe this question also is part of your search journey. So it's suggesting where you might want to go. And what's happening increasingly from a human user perspective is you search for something like, let's say, uh, red shoes. 
and then it will give you a, a people so ask saying where to buy red shoes or what are red shoes and it's saying you know you're not being very clear maybe this would help or if you are being very clear it will suggest questions that push you towards something else so from our perspective as um, digital marketers we want to make sure we're in those questions because when people read them we've got an opportunity to communicate what it is we are offering on something that isn't directly the answer to the question they initially asked Google. And that's really, really, really powerful. And I would suggest that it's a phenomenally important part of any company strategy. I mean, it comes down to answering the questions your users, your audience are asking. Mm. And as a business, you should be doing that anyway. And if you're not, you will see that because you won't be in the people also ask, or for that matter, the feature snippets. So what I've seen in terms of strategy is that it's moving us as an industry, the SEO industry, towards more of an idea of let's find out what our audience are asking and answer those questions. Provide the answers to the questions they're asking Google, and then we can pull them into our site. And that's the aim of the game because Answering questions and providing solutions to problems is what business is all about. That's true. You know, if you can't solve a problem, you're not, make, you're not making any business. You're not, <laughs> you're not doing yeah, anything. Yeah, it's, a, it's a hobby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Google's all about solving problems and answering questions. And so I suppose kind of from that perspective, we can look at it and say, well, how can, how can I help Google answer the questions that my audience has which will help google send them to me because i'm helping google by giving a great answer and if i can demonstrate to google that i do indeed have the best solution to the user's problem when they search on google obviously it's going to send them to me because google's aim is to provide the best solution just like it's my aim to provide the best solution to the problem the user has um so yeah i mean people ask us is an amazing way to start because it, it's basically answering questions that your audience actually truly have. Uh, and feature snippets is similar in the sense that you're answering questions once again. Um, I think both are very, very valuable, but the point I think here is strategically, if you aim for the people also ask, you'll probably get the feature snippets for some of them as well. So you, you're, you're killing two birds with one stone, which suddenly sounds rather cruel now I say it, because I wouldn't want to kill a bird with one stone. <laughs> Right, at all. <laughs> I so know. There you go. I just realized how horrible that is. <laughs> that is actually so true if you think about it. Like, I would not want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes if you say things, you say, isn't that horrible? Right. But that particular sentence, and I've probably said it a hundred times in my life, you go, no, I don't want to kill any birds with any stones. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wow, this is so perfect. This is amazing. You have been able to just bless us with all this information and knowledge so that people have a better understanding because, you know, our our vision, you know, is to majorly inspire, educate and empower people with knowledge so that they can use that information and do their own research, but at the same time, apply those strategies that mean the most to them. So I really thank you so much, Jason, for being here and for being part of today's conversation. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a delightful conversation, Favor, and uh, loved the red shirt, loved the conversation. Uh, that was wonderful. Thank you. You're most welcome. If there's any way they can reach out to you, what are the best options they have so they can be able to stay connected even after this podcast is complete? Oh, right, yeah. Um, well, in fact, if you search my name, Jason Barnard, on Google, what it does is it shows my website at the top, my Twitter profile. I love Twitter, then LinkedIn, then my company. Uh, then a couple of articles I've written, and that basically allows you to choose how you want to interact with me. And I think that's the secret of a great brand search. Uh, the search engine results page, when you search my name, shows my audience, hopefully some of you people out there listening or watching this, allows you to connect with me in the way that's most valuable and helpful to you. And if I've done that, I've done a great brand set. I've done a great job of making what I call my Google business card absolutely perfect. Amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm sure they're going to reach out to you and just stay connected because there's so much to learn. And when you stay with the best, you know, you learn better and you're always keeping up with the trends. Thank you so much, Jason. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Fabio. You're welcome.